Hello everyone, thanks for joining me again today. Uh, you might be wondering where I've been. And it's been a busy summer for me. I've been um, uh, off as a teacher, so I've had a lot of projects to do. And and I also have a son I keep during the day. So I'm out today with my brother-in-law. You'll see him later in the video. We're in the green swamp again. And I uh, wanted to share with you what I've been up to. And... Uh, that has been ham radio. So recently, about, I don't know, two, three weeks ago, I got my technician license. And uh, I studied for that during the summer while I was at home when I had free time. And uh, so far, it's been a really good thing. Uh, um, I've uh, picked up a couple radios, which I'll show you in just a minute. And um, I kind of like the idea of maybe combining ham radio with some of the outdoor activities I do you guys see my videos I come out with uh, you know military surplus to show you guys and things like that but you know combining this with my fishing trips and camping trips and also some emergency preparedness uh, in my area where I live in Florida there is uh, many choices when it comes to uh, repeaters that I can use uh, to, to uh, further my communication so, you know, with this little Yesu handy talkie that I have right here, I could uh, talk to just my city. We have a repeater that's just that. It belongs to our local amateur radio club. <clears throat> we also have a uh, repeater system that is for my county. There's four repeaters that are all linked together. So uh, I can do that. And also there is a repeater near my house that is on a linked system that does for the whole state of Florida so I, I have a lot of options where I live to make these little handy talkies work and you know by themselves uh, two of these they won't talk more than a mile or two you know two on a good day but with a repeater system with the antenna that's way up on top of a tower and this guy down lower with me it takes my signal that I transmit on to the repeater and simultaneously repeats it over a larger area so it makes this radio uh, cover quite a distance okay so our repeaters that we have here locally are pretty good uh, the local one in in my city is about 300 feet in the air I think it is so uh, I can talk for a long for a long distance with just this and even sitting on my couch I've uh, I've been able to uh, talk anywhere in the state, really, if I wanted to, uh, to other amateur radio, radio operators right from my couch in my living room. I don't even need a base station for that. But, you know, uh, for best quality, though, a base station would be good. So uh, here's the one radio I own. This is a Yesu FT70. Uh, about 150 bucks, I think it is. Uh, this does analog FM and it also does digital the repeater in my town has a, um, a Yesu C4 FM digital repeater and it also does analog so <clears throat> Very nice little radio. The only downside is the battery life. The battery doesn't last uh, a full day uh, But uh, that's okay an extra battery will, will, will uh, fix that the other little radio, which is uh, I have, is a Chinese radio, and it is a Baofeng. This is the uh, BF F8HP. It's an 8 watt radio. These are very popular because let me get this microphone off because they are very inexpensive. I, for this radio, it's about 65 bucks on Amazon. And they have cheaper models that are on there. They're less power, kind of clones of clones, uh, radios from China uh, for about 35 bucks. But uh, this radio is analog only, no digital. And it does, uh, it can do everything that this radio can do uh, when it comes to connecting. Uh, I have found that the receiver on it is not as tight as this Yesu. Example, I have a uh, wireless alarm system in my house and every time I walk past the um, the motion detector which is wireless it, it this little radio picks it up makes a little noise chirp 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 
whereas this one this Yesu which is made in Japan does not okay so this this one has a little better receiver on it but <clears throat> they and they say the transmit on these are cleaner too whereas this one is a little bit more noisier but for uh, for most people getting off getting st getting getting started in this hobby this is uh, this is a good way to go I've upgraded it with a larger um, antenna that helps me to have better connection the little what they call rubber duck antenna that came on this was not as nice it didn't have as good range so I was able to buy this antenna inexpensively I think it was like 13 14 bucks on Amazon for this it's a Nagoya NA 320A I don't know if you can see that on the so it's I'm sorry about the plane flying over but that's an upgrade that I did for this little radio and uh, you know these are really nice to have even if you don't talk on if you don't have a ham license because you, it's not against the law to listen so if there's an emergency going on in your area listening to the ham uh, amateur radio frequencies is a good idea because you because those guys are all uh, part of the emergency uh, response that's one of the good things another good thing about amateur radio they're part of the emergency response they they help our emergency uh, people the police the fire and everybody else uh, with communication so their saying is is uh, when all other communication goes down amateur radio will still be there to get the messages out so um, so back to this radio this uh, Balfang uh, I also got this nice external mic uh, I like it because it gets this antenna away from my face when I'm transmitting and plus this Balfang antenna or a microphone in here is not as nice as what this little handheld is so this is a quality handheld made by B-Tech and uh, I got that on Amazon too for about uh, 25 bucks but it plugs in to the side and then I can push the talk here and this microphone I'm told by uh, signal checks and people who are listening say this sounds really really good with this Balfang radio okay so uh, I like in my car in my car I have an external antenna on my truck and I plug it into here onto the top of the radio take this antenna off and plug that in and with this external mic I'm able to plug this this mic into the radio okay lay this on the seat of my truck and then clip this onto my seat belt right here and I'm able to talk without having to pick the radio up the whole time so I can just glance and see what's going on and then talk right here which makes this little external mic nice so this is kind of a, a, a beginners type setup if you're really into talking in your mobile in your in your car or your truck you probably want to upgrade to a mobile because uh, this is only eight watts this uh, Yesu is only five whereas most mobile radios are 50 watts so you're able to talk a lot further distances to repeaters and to radio to radio directly which is called simplex with a mobile radio okay so that's kind of what I've been doing. Um, I'm enjoying the license, having it, talking to different people. Uh, it's it's better than CB because it's more professional. Uh, no cursing on there, which is good when I got the radio on with my young son riding with me. And, uh, you know, you get to meet people who are, you know, like-minded, who love radio. Okay, and uh, there's a lot of them that live around me. Um, my father is also getting his license next week he's going to take the test and i know he's going to pass it <clears throat> already and uh that's been a venture that me and him has been wanting to do for years back in the mid 90s me and my father took a uh we're, we're studying for our test and we were almost ready to take it back in the mid 90s uh but uh some life issues came up uh, my grandfather got sick and then eventually passed away and we uh, just never went back to studying or finishing what we wanted to do so that's what I've been doing here lately I'm still gonna be doing military surplus as a matter of fact on this video my brother-in-law and I were gonna be cooking up a little stuff I brought my uh, Swedish mess kit 
and we're going to be cooking up a little dish out here for lunch and doing a little bit of fishing out here in the green swamp so we'll be back in just a little bit okay so today uh, for our gear rundown start with my stuff it's military surplus decided to bring out the French army canteen and it has a uh, the camo cover with the double snaps like am I I've, I've done a video on this already uh, if you want if you like to see a video on this I'll put a link at the top right now okay and it's got this the cup and the French Army stove in there and I've got that attached to my trusty Czechoslovakian, Czechoslovakian bread bag okay and inside here is all my possibles I carry you know it's got all my fire kit and first aid kit and gloves and cooking utensils and bug repellent and and a backup spit stove all kinds of stuff I carry in here you've seen it in a lot of my videos I'll put a link to it up here now over here uh, uh, attached to this pack which I'll get to in a second is the my um, water filter kit and I have it inside this East German uh, grenade pouch. And I've got a video on that too. I'll put a link at that on the top if you're interested in seeing that. See how I converted this grenade pouch into what I, you know, I keep my uh, Sawyer water filter stuff in there. Here's the bag and the, the actual filter there, okay? And it goes along with a lot of my packs just rides right on the outside so it's easy to get to and it's not in the way and then lastly for my stuff I got the the French Army F2 rucksack and I've done a video on this this is a very nice rucksack rubberized material with pouches all the way around and I'll put a link to that in the top right now if you would like to see that uh, oh also inside today we're going to be cooking with my Swedish Army mess kit. I've got the whole setup in here. This is the aluminum version. Uh, I don't think I've done a video on this yet, but there's lots of videos on this mess kit out there. I'm not gonna bore you with another review, but I'm just gonna cook lunch with it today and you'll see what happens. All right, and then over here, my brother-in-law's got his uh, US Army canteen cup set with the pouches on it. And today, lastly, oh, we got this. His two, he also has two quarts of water in this US kit here. And then lastly, he got for Christmas, he got this, this jet boil system. Or was it Christmas or birthday? Birthday. Birthday, those, yeah, I thought it was birthday. So I've only seen these on the internet. And it's got the coffee press stuff in here. But we're just going to be making us a little bit of coffee here in a second. He's going to try it out, and uh, I'll film a little bit of that. So stick around. We're out before you put the so that's the your gas on. that's your valve, right? On and off valve. That's the on and off valve. Okay. The lefty turns it up. So let's put that down. Why screw that on? There we go. All right. Next, you'll notice it's got these little marks, and they line up with here. So it kind of locks it in place. So you drop it in, and then just twist it, and locks it in place. That's pretty cool. And we found this picnic table, and he has this uh, this stand that folds out to go underneath the, the fuel can, but we don't need it because we're on top of this nice surface, but uh, that comes with your kit too, right? Yes. Okay. No, it does have a mark inside. It's kind of not kind of convenient. It shows you two cups. That's cool. Although I think we're gonna probably want a little more than that. I'm good with a, a cup for me. All right. We're making some instant coffee, by the way. It's about borderline almost too hot, <laughs> but we're gonna have some anyways, right? That's right. And it has this lid, right? Or is this the lid for it? And that is the lid for it, and that helps keep the heat in. It's got a, looks like a straining spot here. 
and a where you can drink out of it too. And this looks like the little thing comes out for the French press, right? Correct. The little these two rods screwed together and then it screwed into this and it becomes a French press if you're going to do that. All right. This is the coffee we're getting ready to make. Okay. But anyway, we just come around, turn your valve on. Whoa, let me move my pack away here. There we go. Oh, should have put a lid on there, huh? All right. So we'll tell you how long it took. So hopefully this thing's not humming too, hissing too loud, but my brother-in-law says that this will turn red when it's about to boil right here. So you can see it now. We do, oh, it's already starting right there. I see it starting to turn red down at the bottom right there. Oh, that's fast. Do you recognize that smell? Oh yeah. Look at that, it's look how fast that is. There's steam coming out of the top already. Holy mackerel, Jonathan. Go check it out. I am, oh, I'm looking right at it. It's uh the recording. It should be boiling man. Oh my gosh, it's been about a minute and twenty seconds if that's true. Is it boiling? I can't tell. Yes, it is boiling. Wow, about a minute and a half, I would say, because I cut the video for just a second. And it's red right there on the side. That's, that is awesome. Cool. Let me get my cup out. Go ahead and get your cup. This is, it went quicker than I thought. Boom. Okay, so it's <clears throat> getting close to lunchtime. We're going to uh, see about making something with our Swedish Army mess kit here. Uh, today it's going to be... Starting out with some summer sausage and some celery, some carrot, some potato, and some mushrooms. Wish I had some fresh mushrooms, but that's what I, I've got. And then there's a couple things of uh, bouillon in here. I think you can see that right there. We're going to add to this mixture. And then after these vegetables are soft, we're going to add this buckwheat into the mixture and it will uh, draw in all the water and be kind of like a, like a rice dish but with buckwheat so we're going to set up over here to the side and get started So we got a little bit of butter in here. We're gonna let that melt a little bit. Yeah, just a minute.
a little bit of <clears throat> little bit of Everglades seasoning. That ought to do. Okay, this is the the bouillon chicken bouillon cubes. There's two of them. My idea was to see if I could get this to dissolve a little bit, but I need to go ahead and pour it in there. It's starting to get burned on the bottom. Let's add a little bit more. The Swedish Army stove doesn't have a way to regulate heat, so I was starting to get a little bit of a some burn there. Look at that right there. So it's not going to hurt nothing, but I'll go ahead and add this water and let it finish cooking a little bit like this. Then we'll add our buckwheat, our mushrooms, and then our buckwheat. Okay, I wanted to show you that we had to pick the pot up off the top and kind of turn it sideways on the on the windscreen. Try to calm it down a little bit. It's still too hot. I'm going to, have to really watch this for this next step. But we're going to add some mushrooms now. And I'm not sure. This is going to be the right amount of water for this buckwheat or not. I got three quarters of a cup of buckwheat here. So it should take about a cup and a half of, uh, needs about a cup and a half of water. So it's kind of close. I'm gonna leave it like it is for now. And then I guess I'll have to add some more. Maybe I'll just start with maybe about that much buckwheat. Uh, let's just dump it all in there. We'll see what happens. We'll take an adventure together. This is a lot of food. This is more than I uh, had anticipated. <laughs> well, let's take a look and see what we got here. Oh my. bad so the buckwheat did absorb a lot of the water there we go so this is ready to eat get into my belly <laughs> I have salt and pepper if you need it Okay. You put Everglades in it, do you? A little bit, but not a lot. Salt in it, right? I think it does. And there's some, a couple of um, bouillon cubes in there, too. So you gotta check it first. Sure looks good, John. Well, that's going to do it for us. Uh, we're going to enjoy this and maybe relax a little bit more and then uh, hike on out of here. Uh, 
if you got any questions about ham radio, I, I kind of did a brief thing on it. Just leave me a comment down in the uh, down in the section in the bottom, and uh, I'll try to answer your question the best I can. Um, one thing I didn't mention was uh, this also this digital Yaesu radio does more than just local repeaters. I can uh, hook to a repeater that's hooked to the internet and talk to somebody that's on the other side of the world or somewhere in this somewhere else in this state. So it's called Wires X that you can do that with. Um, so that's you know from one little walkie-talkie you can do that. You can even use um, like a hotspot or something inside your house that's hooked to your Wi-Fi or even in your vehicle to use to talk around the world okay in these different rooms. So if you got any questions about that let me know and I'll try to direct you. So thanks for watching today. Um, give me a thumbs up if you like the video. If, if you haven't subscribed to me uh, go ahead you know I, I really would appreciate that. I, this is not a monetized channel so I'm not making any money off anything. I'm just doing this all for fun and but it, you know, it just makes me feel good to see more subscribers. So thanks a lot, and I hope you have a good day.